It is so good to see all of you here at Alive. I want to welcome Church Online as well. It's great to have you. Um, we started last week on Mother's Day, we started a series called Planted, and we're talking about being planted in practical teaching. Everybody say planted. Man, and whatever, it's about being planted and letting your faith grow big. We kind of asked the question, imagine what it would be like if you woke up every morning and you just believed uh, you had this great faith that whatever was going to happen that day, Jesus has this. No fear, no worries. You had absolute confidence. I'm talking out-of-the-box kind of living. You just believe he's got it. That, and you had no worries. And we kind of started with that question and that, that, that idea of saying, let's imagine we have that kind of faith. And, and Jesus talked about that kind of faith. We ended last week by saying, now there are five things in the scripture, and there may be more we, it's not like there's a list, but five things we've discovered over the years that really grow our faith that we need to be planted in. So we were, we're going to look at those five things in this series. And today, we want to start with one of those catalysts, which is practical teaching. Everybody say that with me. Practical teaching. That is, in other words, not that we're just learning what the Bible says and knowing what it says, but then we're also applying what it says to our lives. We're living it out. So one of the catalysts is practical teaching, application. And the reason it's so important, it offers the greatest opportunities for our faith to intersect with God's faithfulness. And when our faith intersects with God's faithfulness, our faith grows. It gives it a chance to grow. So let's talk through this idea of practical teaching and how it applies to our life. I put it in your notes. When my faith intersects with God's faithfulness, my faith grows. Would you read that with me, church online, as well? Let's read that together. When my faith intersects with God's faithfulness, my faith grows. The problem in the American church is we've become content just to have information, just to know what the Bible says, instead of knowing how to live it out in our lives on Monday, on Wednesday, on Friday, just to cover the material. But Jesus taught very different than that. Jesus taught us how to live our faith. Jesus said, this is what your life will look like. Paul, in the Bible, he was the same way. He taught very different than just knowing what it says. He said, this is what your faith will look like. This is the application. Now, if you have your Bibles, turn with me to Matthew chapter 7. And we are going to look at verses 24 through 28. Uh, if you know this area of Scripture, this is at the end of what's known as the Sermon on the Mount, uh, one of great, Jesus' greatest teachings. and uh, It's called the Sermon on the Mount just because he was on a, a mountainside there and people gathered around. It starts in chapter 5 and goes through 7. And if you, you read through that, you'll see that Jesus teaches us, this is what your faith looks like. He, he, he doesn't say, you know, this is, what, this is what it all means. He says, this is what it looks like. He spends most of the time in those few chapters telling us what our faith looks like. He says, this is, this is how you'll act in your marriage. He tells us, this is what your prayer life will look like. This is how you pray. He talks to us there about our finances. He talks about our thought life and what it should look like. He says, this is the fulfillment. I came to fulfill the law. And it, this is what it looks like practically in our lives. And then he comes to the end of the Sermon on the Mount. And he gives us this teaching. He wraps it all up with how to live our faith out. So let's look at this first catalyst, getting planted in practical teaching. I want to give you three things that are it's how we do our, our faith. It's how we have opportunities for um, practical teaching and living out our faith to where it intersects with God's faithfulness. The first one is this. Number one, listen to and apply God's word. God's word. We need to listen to and apply God's word. Now, the key word there is apply. Everybody say apply. apply. See, we got the listening part down maybe, but it's the apply part. We put it into practice. Now, before I get too far into this, if you would, take out your phones, text me, turn them on, 
Twitter me, Facebook me, Church Online. You can uh, type something in the chat room there. I would like for you to respond and tell me what do you think is the hardest thing in the Bible for you to apply. And I'm going to read some of those. I won't read your name or anything. They don't even let me see your name, but um, they don't want me picking on anybody, I guess. But I want you to just give me some of those things. What's the hardest thing that you know is truth in Scripture for you to apply? And we're going to talk through some of that here in the end. So let's get started. Matthew chapter 7, verse 24. Jesus has wrapped up Sermon on the Mount. Here's what he says. Anyone who listens to my teaching and follows it is wise. Anybody here want to be wise? Man, I do. He he says that if you listen to my teaching and you follow it, a lot of your versions will say, and put it into practice is wise. Like a person who builds a house on solid rock. Jesus says, our lives are like building on a solid foundation. If we listen to and apply, put into practice, follow his teaching. We hear stories of big faith all the time. And we hear people say, one of the catalysts, one of the things that changed my life was I started going, I was invited to a church where they taught me how to live the scripture. I had heard it all before. I knew what it said. But for the first time, somebody said, I, this is how you can apply this on Monday. This is how this works in your marriage. This is how this works what it looks like in your finances, in your business, in your character. And I started applying the scripture and my faith started to grow. Their faith intersected with God's faithfulness and their faith grew big. They did what Jesus said. They put it into practice. Practical teaching, that is applying it. You see, obedience to God's word, doing what it says, is that greatest opportunity for that intersection of our faith and his faithfulness to happen and I want that in my life so my faith will grow and when we begin to do that everything changes my marriage changes my finances change the way I run my business change the students at school school life it changes when I allow my faith when I start walking in obedience God begins to show up in tangible ways in my life throughout the week it's no longer just a theory It is a life change. It's not just about information, but it's about transformation, being what God wants me to be. Unapplied faith is like unapplied paint. So I have a bunch of paint up here uh, this morning, and uh, you guys, you've all painted your house or something before, and you know, you go to the hardware store, and you know, that's the fun part, isn't it? You feel like, I got a project. And you buy the tape, you buy all the paint, you kind of get everything's ready, you got the brushes, and you get it home, and you still have white walls. And some of you, you you've done that, and you still, you've got the paint sitting there, and you've had white walls for a long time, and you've got all this color. And our faith is like that. We can have it, but unapplied faith is like unapplied paint. In fact, I think I can open one of these. They gave me a canvas today. I didn't get to do this last night. You guys want to, I've got to do this. So this could be a mess. Can you believe people trust me up here? This is a, so this is like our faith, you know. At some point, at some point, we got to apply. What? Whoa, just in time. So unapplied faith is like unapplied paint. You see the beauty, the color. All that comes out when you start applying it. The same is true with our faith. We have to apply it. It's not that we can just know it. It's not about information. It's about transformation. If you want your faith to explode, you want the, you know, the color, the life to come out into your, your daily reality, your daily life, you need to listen and apply. Jesus goes on in verse 25, and this is really the benefit. He says this. He says, though the rain comes in torrents, the floodwaters rise, and the winds beat against that house. And how many of you know the storms in life are going to come? I mean, it, 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 if you're, you think they're not going to, you're kidding yourself. In fact, Jesus told us they would, even as his followers. He said, the storms in life are still going to come. But the difference is how we get through them. Jesus said, even though those things come, uh, the house, which is a picture of our lives, it won't collapse because it's built on, read it with me, what? Bedrock. It's built on bedrock. You see, if we want our faith to reflect like a house built on a solid foundation, Jesus said you need to not only listen, but you need to apply. 
And as I'm saying this, there are some of you, the reality is most of us, we know a whole lot more than we're living. What is it in your faith that you need to apply? You know this is what Jesus says to do, but you're just, you're fighting him in this. And, and right now, there's some of you, even you're starting to argue with me in your mind. You're going, yeah, I don't really want to have to do that. And what is it? You, here's the benefit I put in your notes. The benefit is, this is why we do this, because our lives are like a house. We have a solid foundation. The storms are going to come, but we are built on a solid foundation. The house stands. I want my life to stand, don't you? Not mine, yours. Don't you want yours to stand? Yeah. This is like, it's like exercise. You know, somebody says, I'm going to get in shape this year. And they go out and they buy the equipment. They get it home. They buy all the DVDs. They listen to it all. And I mean, if you went into their house, you would think they know everything there is to know about exercise and being healthy. In fact, if you want to get something to get in shape, you're going to call them. But they never use it. They're totally out of shape. You see, unapplied faith is like that. You have all the knowledge, but it's not transforming your life. Man, I know that's true in every area of our life. I, when we first moved to town, um, I, I had to do the things that everybody does when you move. We had to find a doctor. So I, I went to my doctor. I, I, I got some recommendations from some friends. I went to this doctor. I you know, made the appointment, my first uh, need to go. And, and I, I went into the doctor, and I was just so shocked because I, he had to weigh close to 400 pounds. Now, I'm not saying anything about anybody's weight. I'm talking about my doctor. And my doctor, he's sitting there, and he's telling me what I need to do for my health. And I'm thinking in my mind, I will never come back here again because here's a guy who has all the information, but he doesn't apply it to his own life, and he's going to tell me to apply it? It just doesn't work. Now, for all of you, some of you think I'm horrible right now about my doctor. I don't care what people weigh. I care about my doctor, if he's applying what he's teaching me or not. You guys feel the same way. If I said, hey, you guys should come to this church and you should, you should love your wives, guys. Well, Jeff, do you love your wife? Well, no, man, I cheat on her and all that stuff. You'd go, we're going to find a different pastor, right? Well, it's the same thing. And, the, and people are looking at our lives if we're followers of Christ. Are we applying our faith or do we just have knowledge? Jesus said when we apply it, that our house, it's, it's like our, our lives are like a house built on a solid foundation. The storms will come, but we'll be fine. We will stand. That We'll have a solid foundation. So we listen and apply God's word. That's how our faith intersects with God's faithfulness. And our faith begins to grow. We're planted in this. The second thing, the reason we need to be planted into practical teaching is we need to choose our environments wisely. Would you read that with me? Choose your environments wisely. Your environments help you apply Scripture. Where do you hang out? Do you go to a church? Uh, some of you are here for the first time. You're going, man, we're trying to choose a church. Choose a Bible-based church that teaches application. You don't want to leave uh, every weekend with just, man, I know something new. It's like, no, I'm, I know how to apply God's Word. Go, go to environments that help you where people are learning to apply. It's like, Somebody teach me how to apply the paint. Somebody show me how to get it on the wall. Somebody show me how to apply my faith. Gives me that opportunity for my faith to intersect with God's faithfulness. Jesus goes on. Verse 26, he says this. Anyone who hears. Everybody say hears. hears. So this is gaining that knowledge. I have the information. I've gone to the seminar. I've heard the message, the talk. I've got the CDs. I've listened to it on the radio. Anybody who hears my teaching and ignores it is what? Foolish. Foolish. I know. And some of you right now, I, I'm just telling you, I didn't say it, but Jesus did. If you listen to his word and you don't apply it, Jesus said it's foolish. You're foolish. We're foolish when we do that. Like a person who builds a house on sand. And for some of us, that's offensive. We're like, wait a minute. Jeff, you're telling me I'm a fool just because I haven't applied everything I've learned from God's word? I, I, again, it's not me that's saying that. Jesus said it, though. He said, you're foolish. And he tells us why here in a moment. He said, if you just listen and don't apply, it's foolish. Learning and not applying equals foolishness. I, I know it all, but I, my life can still end in disaster because I don't apply it. It's not about information. It's about transformation. 
My faith intersecting with his faithfulness. He goes on in verse 27. He says, when the rains and the floods come. Let's read this together. When the rains and the floods come and the winds beat against the house, it will collapse with a mighty crash. Well, I don't want my life to look like that. Well, when does it look like that? It looks like that when I hear his word, but I don't apply his word. The storms will come. And what's interesting is Jesus is literally teaching here, uh, as he says, talks about the sand. And we all understand we don't want our house built on a, we want it on a solid foundation. We want our lives on a solid foundation. Um, he, he uses the word here, which is wadi in the Near Eastern culture. The closest thing to a wadi, he, he says, it, it'd be like building your house in a wadi. It would be like building your house in the middle, for those who live in Tucson here, uh, of one of our dry riverbeds. That's what he's saying. Only uh, in the, the Middle East, it's even more severe than it is here during the monsoons. I mean, when the floods come, they just come with a torrent. And he says, that's what it's like. If you listen to my teaching and you don't apply it, it's like putting a house in the middle of the Relito River. Uh, anybody here looking for space to build there? Or the sand? You know, we, we wouldn't do that. Uh, maybe you are. I mean, probably cheap land if you can get it and get a permit, but you wouldn't put your house there. Why? Because even though it's dry now, you know that eventually the monsoons are coming. The rains are going to come. And if you have a house there, it, it only lasts for the season until the, the rains come and you're in trouble. Jesus said, that's what it's like to listen to my word and not apply it. It's like building in the middle of a dry riverbed. The storm will eventually come and it will destroy your life. Now, here's what I know about you. Everybody's listening to my voice. Here's what I know. There's some of you that you're going, oh, you're arguing with me in your mind right now, and I get that. And some of you, you're just saying, I just don't believe this. And you will have to prove what Jesus said is to be true. That is that you're going to leave here today, and you're just going to say, I'm going to live the way I want. I'm not gonna, there's some things in the Bible I just don't agree with. I'm not going to apply what Jesus said. And I think Jeff's wrong. I think Jesus, uh, and you're going to have to prove it. And there will come a time in your life when in those areas you'll crash and burn. It may be your finances, your relationships. It may be your business, whatever it be. It's going to crash and burn. Jesus said it would happen. My hope and my prayer is that you will remember this teaching because I have people come in all the time into my office and say, oh, help, help, we're going through this. And I, I, do you, you know what the Bible says? Oh, yeah, I know what it says, uh, you know, financial crisis. Are you doing what it says? Well, no, we just never felt like we could or we didn't have the faith for that. That's what you got to do. And, and they said, well, what do we do now? You still do it. That's how you get started, to build on the foundation. There's no shortcut. You do it. Do what Jesus said. People come in, their marriage is just falling apart. And they're ready to talk at that point. And they say, what do we do? And I say, well, have you been, do you know what the Bible says about marriage and how you love your wife and husband, you respect your husband? Yeah, we know all that. Are you doing it? No. I can't help you. Do what it says. That just seems so simple, doesn't it? But there are many who, listening to my voice, you'll just, you got to prove it. You're going to have to get there like a stubborn teenager. You just don't believe it, and you got to live it and try it and prove us wrong. Prove Jesus wrong. Jesus says, do this. And you know, when your marriage is falling apart and you come in, the only thing you do is what the Bible says. That's how you get back to where you have a solid foundation. We're headed for a crash, Jesus says, unless we not only listen to, but we apply. So get in environments that help you do that. That's why I encourage people, get in a life group. Get in a life group where people are talking about, how do you live this out in your daily life? Uh, be a part of a church that talks every week. Not, not that you just hear it, but you do it. Uh, I, I encourage people all the time, uh, you know, come to Discover Live. We start you on that journey of how do you live this out in a practical way? The disciplines of being on this spiritual journey. Uh, I, we, one of the things we always talk about here is, what's your next step? You know, we have baptism come up. I'd still... Uh, in this service, if you haven't been baptized and that's your next step, just do it. Uh, we have the clothes for you. We'll do it after the service, at the end of the service. Mike will still do it. Just go find him in the lobby. We're prepared. Take that next step. And there's always a reason we say, well, let's wait and do whatever it is. We'll do it at a certain time or when this happens. And Jesus says, no, do that now. Live it. Live it. Here's the benefit. The benefit is uh, we find when we live in those environments, we have safety during storms. Would everybody say that with me? Safety during storms. 
I want that, don't you? Yes. It's like a house being built on a solid rock versus being built on sand. Now, in Matthew chapter 7, when we go on, Jesus has finished his teaching here, and he, he's finished the Sermon on the Mount. It's all very practical teaching for the most part, and he wraps it up by reiterating. He says, this is what you've got to do. You've got to live it, and this is why you live it, practical teaching. And this is what they say about his teaching as he closes. Verse 28, when Jesus had finished saying these things, the crowds were amazed at his teaching. Let's read it together. For he taught with real authority, quite unlike their teachers of religious law. See, up to this point, the teachers of the religious law, all they had done was they would spend all their time saying, here's the knowledge, here's what it says. But they didn't apply it. And we see it in their life. They did not apply it. In fact, if you go back and you start the Sermon on the Mount uh, in the early parts of it, Jesus says, unless your faith is greater than the teachers of the religious law, uh, he starts out with that right there in their face. And, and the people said, man, this is different. How's it different? Jesus is saying, here's what you do. Don't just have the paint. Don't just know everything about your faith. Apply it. Begin to live it. This is what it looks like. You want God to come alive in your life. In the reality of your everyday living, we need to start applying our faith. Apply it. Listen to and apply his word. Get in environments that help you do that. That gives your faith a chance to intersect with God's faithfulness. And when that happens, your faith will grow. It'll grow big. Get planted in these things. Kathy and I are so blessed. Uh, I was thinking, especially early on in our marriage, um, when we first had kids. I remember we had Carly. And I don't know if you're like us or younger parents, but we, we were clueless. of you know what, what does the Bible really say about raising kids and all those kind of things? It wasn't even on my radar up until that point. And we got in a class of a, a pastor who he started teaching about raising children and what the Bible says. The Bible tells us how to raise our children. It tells us how to do every area of our lives. And we were so blessed because we went through that class with him. And it changed our lives. So when we started making decisions about how to discipline our kids, how to raise them in God's uh, purpose and plan for their life, uh, how to point them in the right direction, what to do as they come into the teen years, we kept going back to the scripture and saying, this is what it says to do. And we, were, we feel so blessed that we were somewhere in an environment where somebody was teaching practical application, not just saying what it says, but they said, here's how you live it out. And it changed our lives for raising our kids. Man, we got to those teenage years, and we've had parents all the time say, how do you get through those without rebellion? Well, we, it's not us. We just did what God's word says. We applied it. Learn to apply it. Get in those environments. I want to tell you, as a church, we are crazy when it comes to evaluating what we do every weekend and in all of our environments when it comes to application. I mean, every Monday morning, my staff, we are harsh about it. We come in Monday mornings, and we say, how do we do? Can people really live this out? Can you live it out? We look at one another. What, how is this going to apply to your life? What will you change? We want to know how to live it out, not just to be hearers, but to be doers of the word. And for some of you, you say, Jeff, for me, I feel like church is just more of that. I come to get that peaceful, easy feeling. You know what I'm talking about? I just want that quiet, reflective time. I don't want all this. I just want a good feeling. Now, there's certainly a place in our faith journey for that to happen. But the reality is, most times when we pick up this book, there's, it's not mostly just about a peaceful, easy feeling. It's a challenge. Most of the times we read it and, and God is stirring something in us to grow our faith, to go forward. I mean, that's just the truth. In fact, every time Jesus taught, we see it. Um, we, we see so many times when, when, I can't believe I did that. Sorry, Tony. Thanks, man. You are awesome. The bigger thing is I lost my clock. <laughs> I feel good. I got another hour or so, right? Okay, I'll get it. <laughs> I guess the bigger thing is I lost my Diet Coke. I'm covered. I have it. 
Okay, the guys are always looking for outtakes. Ah. Uh, we see it in Jesus. I think this is where I was at. Jesus, uh, at the end of his teachings, in fact, in John 8, at the end of Jesus, he just finished the sermon, and uh, the people wanted to stone him to death. We see other places where they wanted to kill him. I put one of them in your notes just so you can see this. Jesus just finished teaching the Bible, and here's what it says, Luke chapter 4. They got up, forced Jesus out of town. This is kind of the standard that we're looking for as pastors. They took him to the edge of the cliff on which the town was built. Read it with me. They planned to throw him off the edge. I mean, he ticked people off. Why? Because he was saying, this is how you live. You guys have all the knowledge. And you know who's doing this? Uh, who, who it's talking about here? The people who want to kill him, who want to throw him off the edge of the cliff? It's the people who knew the word the most. It's the religious leaders. They had the first five books. That's all it was written for them at that time. They had the first five books of the Bible memorized. They knew it, but they didn't live it. So when Jesus challenged them to live it, they wanted to kill him. And that's why Jesus says, don't just listen to it. Obey it. Put it into practice. I asked you earlier, what's the hardest thing to put into practice? Uh, some, some of you responded, several of you responded. Somebody said, the hardest thing, you guys trying to get the Diet Coke off of you, I'm really sorry. <laughs> you know, we, we talked about making this area right here the splash zone for baptism. <laughs> Never thought about it for Diet Coke, but for baptism... <laughs> Because it does get wet down there. This is kind of like a, what's, what, where? Sea World, yeah. There you go. Instead of a whale, you got me and my Diet Coke. Uh, so several of you responded. Somebody said, the hardest thing for me to apply is spending time in the Bible daily. Man, there's a lot of us. We'd agree. We say, yeah, that's tough stuff. It's hard for me to just do that on a regular basis. And yet it brings life, doesn't it? It just speaks life to you. Uh, somebody says, being slow to speak. You know, the Bible says be slow to speak, uh, slow to, to anger. Uh, trying to love all people like Christ does. Anybody else think that's hard? Yeah. Put in practice, yeah. Uh, be perfect, even as our Heavenly Father is perfect. Scripture says that. Well, we sure can't do that on our own, can we? We've got to have his, his strength in us. Um, they, they put, yeah, like that's going to happen. <laughs> um, I know God will always provide, but I struggle with, always with tithing, especially when money is short. However, I'm getting better. You know, it's a challenge to us, isn't it? And God says this is an area of trust in your finances, that I'll meet all of your needs if you'll do this first. But we always feel like, ah, oh, let's have God provide first, and then I'll, I'll trust him. But again, this is what Jesus says, man, protection during that storm. Uh, treating my body like God's temple. Uh, that's why I recommend Diet Coke. <laughs> you'll, you'll notice I've never done, actually last year we wanted to do a series. We were going to call it Bod for God. And um, I tried to get in shape and get ready for it, and I just didn't get there, and I'm still, I have a doctor who's wonderful, she's really helping me get there, but I wasn't there, so I didn't teach on it. Uh, again, we, we really, we want to live what we teach. So someday, if I ever get in shape, and I'm really doing what I'm supposed to do, and I give up the Diet Coke, we'll do that series, okay? <laughs> Until then, you're not going to, you can come and be relaxed about that part of your life, okay? <laughs> the scripture does say, however, though, that there is Paul says there is some value in physical exercise, but the greater uh, value is in spiritual discipline. So I keep leaning on that one. <laughs> I know. Don't. Yeah. Uh, let me give one more. Somebody says, I struggle with walking in faith instead of fear. Man, that's, what we're, that's why we're doing this series. God wants you to have big faith. Imagine waking up every morning and say, I don't have any fear because God's got this. I am walking in faith. Let me give you the third one. Remember, you don't get credit for just knowing. When it comes to applying God's word, you got to know this. Just remember, you do not get credit for just knowing. The religious leaders knew it. They taught it, but they didn't live it. It's like having paint that you never put on the wall. You don't get credit for your house being purple walls just because you have purple paint in the bucket. you got to apply it. Jesus said it's like building uh, your life on sand if you don't apply it. Right now, we are in the process, Kathy and I, of training up another driver in our family. It's our third daughter learning to drive. So we've done this before, uh, and she's a great driver so far. I'm not worried about her. I, my fourth kid is a son, so that's the one. It's, it's coming. So God loves practice. But here's the thing. Can you imagine, Christy, she's, she's 15 and a half, has her permit, but can you imagine that she's, she gets her permit, but we never let her drive. 
And she goes and, and she takes her license test. And I know you can't get your license without driving. But if she went to the license bureau place and they said, well, if you'll just pass a test on paper, you can have a driver's license and you can drive anywhere you want. I mean, the streets of Tucson are yours. And she's never driven a car before. Can you imagine that? We would, we would all be in serious trouble if that's the way they gave out driver's license. Why, why do they make the kids learn to drive with us as parents first? Because even uh, the government understands that unless you apply what you know, you still don't know it. It does you no good. So Christy's learning to apply. Uh, I, I would warn you to watch out in the parking lot of our church sometimes because that's where she's learning to apply it. You know, we go up to other churches with bigger parking lots, and that's where we learn to apply it. Why? Because we understand the concept. It's not just knowledge. It's application. And we would all say it's true in every area of our life, and yet in our spiritual journey, there are times we see what God says to do, and we'll say, I don't like that. That doesn't feel right to me. Or I'm angry at God, so I'm not going to do that. And, and, and you know who it hurts? Me, us, you. Because God says, look, I'm not doing this so you won't have fun. I'm doing this. I say these things because I'm God, and I see the storms of life that are coming your way. And when they come, I want your life to be like a house on a solid foundation. That's what I want you to prepare for. And if you'll do it, if you'll apply my word, you will stand. You're like a wise person. Now, as we come to the end here, I want to ask you, what are some areas in your life? And as we started this, boy, you've had this wrestling match going on with God right now, and maybe even in your mind arguing with me. You're going, yeah, well, I know you teach this, or I know God says this, but I'm just not going to do it. What are those areas? Either because of fear or rebellion, you just don't want to do it, that you're just not applying. Because today, today's a day where you say, you know what, Lord? I'm going to quit living like a fool. I want to live in wisdom. I need your help to do this, but I'm going to begin to apply your word. Now, you all have a memory verse, and we're learning scripture as we go along here because the way we do apply it is to learn it. We learn it and apply it. It's information that leads to transformation. So James, chapter 1, if you take out your memory card, let's read this together. Verse 22, James is just reiterating what Jesus has taught at the end of the Sermon on the Mount. He says this. Let's read it out loud. Uh, uh, church online, you should have it as well. Don't just listen to God's word. You must do... Oh, wait a minute. Let's read it with enthusiasm, okay? This is a verse we're going to memorize if you don't know it this week. But don't just listen to God's word. Do what it says. Otherwise, you are only fooling yourself. Whoa, that's a challenge, isn't it? Don't just listen to it. Do it. Otherwise, you're fooling yourself. So I'm going to encourage you to, to memorize that verse this week. In fact, that's part of the next steps on your connection card. Take out your connection card, and if you're going to memorize that verse with me this week, check that off as a next step. I'm going to be praying for you. I know you guys are praying for me as well. The other thing on the next step is this. If you've identified an area where you say, I need to start applying God's word, would you check that off, and I'm going to be praying for you. You may want to write that area down so I can pray for you this week. We're going to be praying for you. In fact, we're going to close by praying for one another right now. Father, as we come to the end of this teaching, I thank you for your word. You make it very clear how we can have a life that when the storms come, we can survive the storms. And not just survive, but thrive. We can stand strong. Lord, that is so exciting to me to know that you've given us a clear path, a clear direction, a clear blueprint for the how we can live a life like that. And we're choosing to do that today. We're choosing to not just listen to your word, but to applying it. And as we do, we know our faith will intersect with your faithfulness, and our faith will grow more and more. Now, as we're praying, if you have one of those areas where you say, Jeff, you know, I, I do have an area I've identified that I know what God's word says, but I'm just not living it. I'm not applying it. And today, I'm choosing to do that. Maybe it's in your finances. Maybe it is in relationships or integrity in your business, in school, honesty, whatever it would be. 
say, Jeff, I am choosing to apply that today. My prayer life, spending time with him. Just make that your prayer. Say, Lord, here it is. I know this is the area that you're touching today. I'm giving it to you. I'm committing that when I walk out these doors, I'm going to apply it in my life. Not just while I'm here on the weekends, but I'm going to apply it every day of my life. Would you help me to have your power, your strength, Holy Spirit in me so that I can do that? Otherwise, I fail, Lord. And I know that's that's true of me, Lord. On my own strength, I fail. I need your strength in me to apply your word. So just receive that right now. Just receive it. Now, as we're praying, if you say, Jeff, I'm not even a follower of Christ yet. Well, I want to encourage you that that's where it starts. And as you've seen this morning, Jesus tells us the storms in life are coming. And maybe you're here because you're in the middle of one of those storms. You'd say, Jeff, I, I want to begin the journey today of getting my life on a solid foundation. That solid foundation, gang, is Jesus Christ. Just pray this prayer. Say, Lord Jesus, I want to invite you into my life. I want my life to be built on a solid foundation. And today, I see that that's you. I choose to give you my life. I ask you to forgive my sin, the guilt and shame of my past. Just remove all that. And help me, Lord, to live in the freedom and the purpose you have for me. Help me to begin this journey and to apply your word to my life. Help me to have a relationship with you for all of eternity. Lord, for all of us this week, as we are challenged by this, Lord, I know there's some of us that you are stirring in our hearts that we're just not doing certain things in our life that your word says to do. Would you, Holy Spirit, just continue to bring that up in our lives this week and give us your strength and power to apply your word. Not only to listen, but to apply. To get in environments, Lord, that help our faith intersect with your faithfulness. Cause our faith to grow big. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. If you would, in just a moment, the ushers are going to be coming. And would you drop your connection card with your next steps on there so I can pray for you this week. They give me that list. And I keep that list on my desk and my computer all week long. And I pray for you. I know you're praying for me. God bless you. We'll continue the series next week. I want to turn the services over to uh, Pastor Phil at Church Online. Hi, I'm Phil Thompson. I'm the Digital Missions Pastor at Alive Church, a.k.a. Church Online Guy. Thank you so much for viewing today's service. We hope that you enjoyed it. We hope that it encouraged you. And let us know if there's something going on in your life we can pray about. Give us some feedback perhaps on the services. We'd love to hear from you. Just click on our prayer next step connection card just below the chat here. It only takes about 30 seconds and we promise no spam. We'd love to hear from you. You can always follow us on Facebook. Just go to facebook.com slash Alive Church Tucson and let us hear from you. Again, thank you for viewing the service today. We sure appreciate your time and have a great day.